If we want to create our image by combining the render passes together, there are certain rules that apply no matter what render engine we use. We always take the color of the material and multiply it by the sum of the light sources that influence this color. Then we add all of those elements together and we get our final image. In fact, we are doing nothing more than adding and multiplying. In my series, I concentrate on Blender's internal render engine. But let's for the moment imagine that you would like to combine the image from the passes that Cycles render engine gives us. In Cycles, here we have the passes and we activate them here. We have three major groups, Diffuse, Glossy and Transmission and two additional passes, Emission and Environment. For all of those three groups, we can activate the direct light, indirect light and the color of this group. So if we want to combine the diffuse, we take the sum of the direct and indirect light and multiply it by the color. The same applies to glossy and transmission. Then we take all of them and add them. And on top of that, we can add the emission and environment. It is very well explained here in Blender Wiki. We can find this page when we go to blender.org. Here is the education and help. We can choose the user's manual. Then here we have the section rendering with cycles and when we choose the introduction we can find the render passes section here. And at the bottom of the page we have the graph that shows us how to combine the cycles render passes. So when I activate all of those passes in cycles here is what I get as the input render layer. We have the diffuse direct light, diffuse indirect light and diffuse color and we can simply add diffuse direct to diffuse indirect, then multiply this sum by the diffuse color. Do exactly the same with the glossy, direct plus indirect, multiplied by the glossy color and with the transmission. Then I have to take the sum of those operations and add emission and environment to it. So we can add this one to this one, and then take the sum of it and add the transmission to it. The only thing left to do is to add the emission and the environment and we can add this to this. We cannot now see any result of it because I didn't render anything with the cycles render engine and as I said at the beginning I won't be concentrating on cycles but if you have some render where you have those passes activated you can check if this solution works. When we use Blender's internal render engine, we can use the similar approach. We take all of the light sources that have the interaction with color, which are direct light, environment light, ambient light, which in most cases is just an ambient occlusion, especially when we used the add blending mode for ambient occlusion, then the indirect light. We add all of those lights together and multiply it by the color. Then we add the lights that don't have interaction with colors, which are specular and reflections. Reflections is how other objects reflect in our surface and specular is how the lamps in our scene reflect in our surface. Here I purposely used some empty nodes because as you learned in the previous episodes, some of those passes are not given to us by default. We have to create them separately by using separate render layers or try to extract them from the passes that are given to us by default. So in the previous episodes I explained how to create the direct lighting pass. For the environment light we can simply take the environment lighting pass. Ambient we can use the ambient occlusion and this will work only when we use the add blending mode for ambient occlusion. If we used the indirect lighting we simply take this pass and plug it here and then we multiply it all by the color pass. Specular is just the specular pass and reflections are a little bit more tricky but I explained it all in the separate video about reflections pass. In this example I have created one of the render layers such that I have the color pass, diffuse pass, specular, shadow, ambient occlusion, environment lighting and reflections activated but here as you can see only the shadow pass is included into the combined pass. And of course diffuse and the color, those ones cannot be excluded. This way my combined pass is my colored direct lighting. So when in compositing I want to create the clean direct lighting, 
I can use the approach that I showed you in the previous episode. I can take this colored direct lighting and divide it by the color pass with all of the adjustments that I showed you in the previous episode. I have created the group that does exactly this. I called it clean light. So I take the combined pass, my colored direct light, plug it to the upper socket and to the lower socket I will plug the color pass. This will give me the clean direct light. I can plug it here. When I expand this group, it looks like this. So here everything is done exactly the way that I showed you in the previous episode. So I take the value of the colored direct lighting, the value of the color pass, I divide this by this, then here I force the results to use the alpha channel of the first input, and as the result it gives me the clean direct lighting pass. So if this is my colored direct lighting, that's the clean direct lighting. So I can take this and use it as the direct lighting pass. Then I add the environment lighting, use the factor that I want. I can also add the ambient occlusion that looks like this. I added it here in this node, used the very low factor. In this example, I don't have any indirect lighting. So this node doesn't have any influence. And here I take the sum of all of those lights and multiply it by the color. And that's the result that I get. And having done all of that, I can add the specular and then I'd like to add the reflections. In the episode about issues with reflections pass, I explained that it's best to take the combined pass as the reflections pass. This would work only when the reflection pass is included into the combined pass. In this case, it's excluded. But if I take the combined pass created this way and add reflections pass, this weird reflections pass that Blender gives us, the one that looks like this, with this strange tint, with some negative values. I explained all of those details in the episode about reflections pass. So in our case, I can take the combined pass, add those weird reflections, and I get this result. For all of the reflective surfaces, I have used the reflectivity value of one, so I can treat this as the reflections pass, limit its influence only to the areas that are reflective and add it to my image using the factor that I want. I have created the render layers that give me proper alpha channels of all of those reflective surfaces. So I can now combine them together to create the map of reflections. I can pass those alpha channels through the math nodes where I will use the multiply operation I will do it for all of those alpha channels. Then I can create the sum of them. So I will also use the math node, but change the operation to add. And we'll add all of those one by one. That's my result. So this is the sum of all of those alpha channels, but I can easily control each one of them by setting this second input of the multiply node and you see that the rims went a little bit darker. I can create the group of all of those nodes. Then when I expand it, I can take those second inputs of the multiply nodes and use it as the inputs. I can give those inputs the proper names so that I know what they represent. Let's collapse this group. Now it looks like this and I can easily set the reflectivity factors of all of those parts. So if this is the sum of my combined pass and Blender's reflections pass, I can plug it here, use it as the reflections pass, which I am adding here in this mix node with the add blending mode. I will use this group as the factor of this node. And now I can easily change the reflectivity of certain parts. Let's lower the reflectivity of the body too something like 0.2 maybe. Grill 0.5, rims shouldn't be that reflective. And let's lower those two as well. Here in this example, I have included all of the passes that I used into the combined pass. It is also possible to extract the clean direct lighting, but in this case, we have to multiply the colored diffuse pass by the shadow pass. 
So we may encounter all of the issues that I showed you in the episode about shadows. I have used two lamps as the direct lighting and I wanted those monkeys to be reflective. So as always reflectivity is set to 1, all of the materials diffuse intensity is set to 1 and I have explained why I do it in one of the previous episodes. That's the result of our render and we can recreate this using all of those passes following the procedure that I showed you earlier. So in this case we also want to use the clean direct lighting but it's created a little bit differently. First I have to take the diffuse pass and multiply it by the shadow pass and that's the result. Then I pass it through the clean light group where I use this as the first input and the color pass as the second input. Here I add the environment lighting pass to it and because right now I am recreating the combined pass I used the same factor here as here in the world settings. Here in this node I add the ambient occlusion as you see I used the add blending mode for ambient occlusion and used the same factor as here. Then the result of this is multiplied by the color pass. Here I add the specular on top of that and as the last step I add the reflections. This way I recreated the combined pass that looks like this and there are some differences but not that much noticeable. I can as well recreate the combined pass using all of the passes that I have available using the approach that I showed you in this tutorial, Introduction to Compositing in Blender Round 3. It's available on cgcookie.com. So here I start everything by multiplying diffuse pass by the shadow pass. Then I add ambient occlusion. But here I have to multiply it first by the color pass. In this note I add the environment lighting and I also multiply it by the color. And here as previously specular and the reflections. And the result is exactly the same. But using this approach we have some more problems when trying to adjust those elements. But I prefer this way, this first way that I showed you to combine the passes together. In this example I have also created two additional render layers where for the first of them I used only one lamp and for the second one I used the second lamp. For both of those render layers I have activated the shadow pass and the specular pass. Specular is excluded, shadow is included so the combined passes of those render layers are my colored direct lighting. This way I can add those combined passes together which gives me exactly the same result as multiplying the diffuse pass by the shadow pass in this render layer where I used both of those lamps. So here instead of using this product I can use this sum and at the end I get exactly the same result but here I can control the power of those lamps. But in this case I wouldn't want to make the clean light out of the colored light here having added those lights together. Let's delete this node and clean those lights here before they are added. So let's add our clean light group here and here. And here I have the access to the color pass so let's plug it to both of those nodes. This way I can not only control the power of those lamps but also their color. I can add the mix node, multiply blending mode, let's plug one of them here and the second one here and now I can set the colors of those lamps. And that's my new direct light, I can plug it here but now when I look at the result I see that something weird is happening on the monkey and it's caused by the reflections. Without reflections everything is perfectly fine. But we can rather easily fix it because as you remember I would rather use combined pass as the reflections instead of using those weird reflections. But let's take a look at the combined pass. Before we can use it as the reflections pass we have to limit its influence only to the areas that are reflective. And let's imagine that I forgot to render the alpha channels of those objects. I can use a little trick to extract those objects. Let's take a look at the reflections pass. Wherever there is no reflections the color is black and here in those areas we have some values of the colors. They are positive, negative but they are not equal zero. Let's pass this reflection pass through the mix node where as the second input I will use the black color and use the difference blending mode. That's the result that we get. 
We don't have to worry about those weird colors. What's important here is that those colors have the values greater than zero, and here we have zero. So let's pass this result through the math node, change the operation to greater than, and set the second value to zero. And this may be treated as the alpha channel of those monkeys. We have some jagged edges, but we can smooth them using filter delayed erode, and since Blender version 2.64, this delayed erode node has some additional functionality. Let's change this option from step to threshold. And we immediately see that it begins to look as if it's anti-aliased. If this result won't work, we can of course adjust those values here. Let's move those nodes and this reroute point somewhere here. And here in this last node of my chain, instead of using this reflections pass, let's use the combined pass. But as the factor, I will use this one. This of course didn't recreate the combined pass because we used the add blending mode. We have added the clean reflections to our image. But if we want to recreate the blender's behavior, we can change the blending mode of this node to mix. But I prefer the add behavior, so I will change the blending mode to add. I can take a look at the edges here and it doesn't work perfectly, so let's adjust those values of delayed erode node. Distance of minus one should work fine. And now I can adjust all of those passes to create the result that I want. Let's for example lower the intensity of those reflections, but here the factor is occupied, so let's pass this one through the math node, and let's simply multiply this one by some value, by default it's set to 0.5, let's set it to 0.4. And since here I have the alpha channel, kind of the alpha channel of the monkeys, I can adjust them a little bit further. I can make some extreme changes, like changing the color of them. Here I am multiplying the light sources by the color, so let's change this color, basing on this factor. I can mix the color pass with whatever color I want using this as the factor. Let's take a look at the final result. And here I can set this color to whatever I want.